Today in the news, we got cars that can't read, controllers, screws, certifications, and more. A lot of tiny news, so strap up. What's up, guys? I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Sorry for the echo. Let's get started with Sony. They have a patent design for their next-gen VR controllers. This patent was filed back in 2018 and just recently got published. As you can see, it is very reminiscent of the Valve Index's controller. Just like it, it has finger tracking from the middle to the pinky finger with a trigger for the index. It's a lot less ergonomic looking with its blocky design, but the shape is always something they can change. Honestly, with Phil Spencer saying VR is pretty much out of the question for Xbox, I might lean towards PlayStation for my next-gen console. I'm sorry, Xbox, I just like VR. Moving on, can you tell the difference between this number and this number? Great, that means you're not a 2016 Tesla Model X or Model S, which would be concerning if you were. Researchers at McAfee were able to trick said Tesla models with nothing but a single piece of black tape. By extending the middle of the 3 in 35, the car recognized the area as having an 85 miles per hour speed limit, which is insane. In Canada, the fastest speed limit is set at 75 miles per hour or 120 kilometers per hour. Not only did the car misinterpreted the sign, but it also started accelerating dangerously while in cruise control. Now, of course, like in any cars, the humans should have their eyes glued on the road. But it's pretty interesting to see how little it takes to make a car like this go haywire. Then we have Asus in the news with some RX 5700 series kerfuffle. Because of a large amount of complaints about high temperatures on the RX 5700 series, Asus decided to investigate further. The company was making their ROG Strix cards according to AMD's specs, where the screws were holding their heatsink between 30 to 40 psi. After the testing, Asus found that 50 to 60 psi would eliminate the heat transfer issues from the GPU to the heatsink. Because of that, Asus now has to modify user cards with upgraded screws for this issue. The free upgrade program they plan to roll out will start in March of 2020. Any 5700 series bought since January comes with the updated specs though, so you don't have to send it out. While the upgrade is free, you might have to pay for shipping to the manufacturer, which sucks. And while I get that Asus blames AMD for the specs, I mean, it kind of is AMD's fault, aren't those cards supposed to go through extensive testing before it's mass produced? I think it's a 30 to 60 blame here for uh, Asus to AMD. That's the ratio. Oh, and also this case came out from Asus. I don't know why it has straps in the front end, but yeah. Moving on to some Stadia news, it looks like another piece of the service is finally going to go live. Since release, gaming on a smartphone was exclusive to Google's Pixel 2s, 3s, and 4s, but the company has just announced that starting tomorrow, 18 new devices will join Stadia. Both Razer phones, both Asus ROG phones, and Samsung Galaxy devices from the S8 all the way up to the S20 Ultra will support the service. I mean, it's nice that Google is expanding the compatibility, but you still have to connect your Stadia controller via USB-C to the phone if you want to use it. It makes no sense. At least you can use your own controller if you have a compatible one. And Razer has some pretty cool ones. It's time for the free games alert. This is your weekly reminder to go get your free games from the Epic Store. Until tomorrow morning at 11, that's February 20th for those who watched this video late, you can get Kingdom Come Deliverance and Aztez for free. More interestingly though, you can get the 2015 Assassin's Creed Syndicate and Feria, and F and Feria, Feria, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, starting tomorrow after 11. Pick them up, play them, let me know what you think. Oh, by the way, I've decided I would start streaming on Twitch. I know I was debating between Twitch and YouTube, but I plan to use my personal YouTube for other stuff. So Twitch it is. I set up my new studio for it. As you can see, there's a light for the, for the whole streaming stuff. And uh, I'm working on my overlays and I'll let you guys know as soon as I'm going live. Moving on, a quick update for an AMD story we covered a few weeks ago. It looks like AMD has once again passed a GPU through the Korean RRA for certification. Last one was on February 3rd, and this one happened today. So far, RRA certifications have come fairly close to actual release dates for AMD GPUs. And since most of the lineup has been released, and since AMD is planning to talk about RDNA 2 on March 5th for their uh, financial analyst day, this GPU is likely the elusive NVIDIA killer or just big Navi. 
Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any comments or questions, you know where to put them in the comment section down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. By the way, do you guys like the setup? I think I got the lighting right. The, the, the boot sequence, very nice wallpaper, and the, the blue and the red, uh, I can switch these colors, so let me know. Take care.